I believe that I can help them with their substance abuse. Um, I'm learning how to help people who are homeless deal with their mental issues and their substance abuse problems. And uh, it's been quite a ride. Would you like a lunch? Yeah, please. Sure. Yeah. Oh, that'd be great. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. It's, it's hard. It's, I mean, I've, ne I've always had a roof over my head. I can't imagine um, when and a lot of times when you work with with this population, it's it's you have to put yourself in their shoes, and it's, and it's I can't I mean I can't imagine not going to bed and not knowing where I was going to sleep at night and if I was safe and it's so a lot of it is is trying to um, it's re like really being empathetic and trying to convey like you know what I know that. Um, out there, you're not safe, but here, like you, you come to a safe place, and I'm here to help you. You know, cause uh, who wants to see a person out here in the cold at night? You know, it, it's it's a it's a sad situation. I'm able to to look at someone who, who is homeless and say, "This is a, there's a human being there. This, it's not a piece of trash. It's not garbage. It's not someone I just throw money at. There's a human being there with a story and with who has a mother, father, uh, sister, probably maybe a wife. I don't know. Maybe a husband, children, and and this person is struggling with their life right now. Okay. I'm going to keep it real with you people, besides me being homeless and all the drama that I've been through in my life, okay? I define myself as living a man living as a woman because, you know, ever since I was 16 years old, I had that dream of wanting to live as a, as a female, okay? Certain people that I've been around all my life, some people agree to it and some people don't. This guy that I'm so-called friends with now, he, he puts me down on everything that, that I try to explain to him. Uh, he, he does, it seems like he never seen nobody like me before. Like I come from another planet or something. I'm a recovering addict. I've been in, uh, in recovery for about eight years. My drug of choice was crack cocaine. And I also had a alcohol problem. I have two DUIs that, that indicate that. Um, so, working with people who are homeless, um, one of one of the things that they are dealing with is substance abuse, and they're you know I I understand almost immediately where they're coming from when they're talking about well I don't know how to deal with this I don't know this seems to be my only solution. There's a guy who's been doing drugs. And I finally had mentioned it to Sonia, and this guy got, he's got a... He had been homeless for four to five years, and, uh, but prior to him being homeless, he, he was pretty successful. He was, um, he was a foreman as a uh, cement mason, and he was making quite a bit of money, and he was doing okay for himself. He had an alcohol problem, and he picked up his third DUI. And that's when things started tumbling for him. Um, he couldn't make it to work because they um, they suspend they impounded his truck. He got pulled over, and um, he lost his job. And shortly after that, he became homeless. Edward was mugged. He had his face in his hands, and he was just sitting down on the curb. And someone came by and kicked him, kicked him really hard, uh, hard enough that for the next two days he had insomnia. And um, he went to Long Beach Memorial and the doctor said that he had fractured his skull. And since then, he's had a lot of balance issues, um, short-term memory loss, uh, reading comprehension difficulties, um, just a lot of cognitive difficulties. Well, that. write it down, because a lot, that helps yeah, you. That helps you. 
I work mostly with HAP, which is a homeless assistance program. And within HAP, you have the drop-in center, which is where um, persons who are homeless come in. Do you need a shower? Do you need um, to do your laundry? Um, things of that nature. I personally work in Safe Haven, which is it's more you have their your members who are we call our clients members who are harder to to engage uh, many of which have mental health um, problems we're, we're, yeah we, we need to start going this way instead of keep going the way it's going yeah getting used as a pawn and yes mm -hmm. those are those are very valid feelings that you're coming because up with, so. ultimately it is on them to help themselves but I'm here, I'm right here to help. So it sounds like something that we may want to work on is surrounding yourself with better people, with yeah. good good people just like you. And you know, I, I, can't, I can't have, I know I can't actually have it my way. Sometimes, I know I can't always have it my way when I'm out here homeless. You see men, you see a lot of women, which is really, really surprising to me. And, um, so it's it feels good waking up and knowing that that you're helping someone what a gift i mean what a gift to be on this side the village and hap and hip is almost the bridge and i'm just waiting on the other side trying to get someone across that's what it feels like at, at times and you know it's an honor and a privilege to do that i realize that i'm in the right place i have chosen the right profession and i'm among my people that I can help. You know, I, I know that I can make a difference for someone. And the strangest thing is, is when I make a difference for someone else, they make a difference for me. And I didn't expect that.